This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Alex Bennett, and it's the Ramble. It goes on till midnight. Uh, I have no new interviews tonight uh, because I, uh, I've been too lazy to do them. Uh, we'll be we'll doing some tomorrow. In fact, we're doing two of them tomorrow, and uh, some of the people couldn't make it this week, and so uh, I've kind of decided to just, uh, uh, you know, uh, play an old one because. I'm too lazy to spend the next half hour talking to you all by myself. So, let's go talk to one of our old friends. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a while, but we got him back again. Ladies and gentlemen, the old room is back. Lighten up, everybody. The old room's here. Yeah. Hey, Alex. Yeah? We're getting the band back together. Yes. Uh, let's see. Bubs does the show. Yeah. Pearl does the show. Durst yeah. does the show, and now you do the show. That's funny, man. See, look, none of us talk to each other, but we all talk to each other through you. <laughs> I'm Deep a, like, seems like old times. I'm a resource. You are, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah You're yeah. a veritable resource yeah. of hooking people up and getting the old neighborhood back together. Yeah. Let's see here. Who else do I need now to make it complete? You know. uh, you need. Uh, oh my God! I, I, I don't. Need, I don't. I don't need anybody else. I mean, you, you. You four were the core of my show in San Francisco. Yeah, man, it was a lot of fun too. I. Re yeah, I remember. Uh, uh, I remember it vividly. And I still possess probably about 90 cassette tapes. Really? Yeah, and the, the cassette tapes are great because they don't have any commercials in them. <laughs> and I've been listening to some of the old shows, man. They're, ma they're amazing. They were just so much fun. Wait a minute. But our voices, our voices are very much are higher. Uh, are slightly higher, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if that's the tape it's, or just because the vocal cords weren't used as much. I no, I think that as you, like I go back to tapes of me when I was really young, you know, in this business, and it's up, it's up in here somewhere, you know. In fact, when I started out in this business, the one thing I hated about my voice was how high it was, so I worked on getting it lower, you know. Right. You know. Yeah, but, man, you were, uh, you sounded like a girl. No, I didn't sound like a girl. Also, the tapes you might have might have been slightly recorded off speed. And, and that could be the like problem. like me. Because I've had to go back to some of those old tapes, and I listen to them, and then I say, i got to change the pitch on this. And I, and I redo the pitch because the pitch, the, the tape was running slow when it was recording, so therefore it was fast when I was playing it back. And uh, it wasn't like Mickey Mouse, but it was just a shade higher. So. Well, here's the pitch. He's a single guy. He lives in Hollywood. He's been in a lockdown facility. He escapes, and he wants his old job back. What do you think? That's what happens when you say to anybody who's trying to make it in Hollywood, as Rube has been trying to do for the last 20 years, pitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just you automatically go into, geez, did somebody say pitch? I got an idea. Tell them what a horror pitch meetings are. Oh, my God. Oh. First of all, you literally get, uh, I get, I do, I get a nauseous feeling in my stomach. You really? <laughs> because <clears throat> basically what it is, it's the one moment in your life where you realize you're going to go do something that represents your art and represents what you love and represents your whole life. And you're going to present it to people that could care less, that wouldn't know what was funny if it crawled up and bit them on the ass. Yeah. And they really, even though they're scheduled a meeting with you, they really don't have any time for you. And to top it all off, even when they're shaking their hand, your hand and telling you, it's great, they can't wait to hear what you have to say, you don't get any eye contact. So you put all that stuff together, and it just spells out F-U-N. 
Oh, boy, oh, boy. whoop de doo we're having fun now. Oh, man, it's just, it is it is the worst feeling in the world. And, uh, and you go in, and you go into these offices, and everybody who's working is very hip and very trendy, and they, you know, they want to offer you uh, something to drink. You know, you want you want a, a, a latte frappuccino or whatever. It's like, I, I tell you, honestly, I need a beer and a shot at this point. Yeah. And, um, you know, one time I did a, a pitch for, uh, for uh, the Fox channel. Mm-hmm. And I picked up a whole, and it was, what it was is for a, it was for a, uh, a sketch comedy show with a Southern angle to it. Mm-hmm. And, and myself and Clark Taylor and a couple other people were involved in it. And, uh, um, what I did was I went, I, I, I convinced the producer to, uh, take us to Roscoe chicken and waffles <laughs> and get a big, you know, enough to serve like 10 people. Yeah. So I go walking in there and, uh, I walk down this hallway with a big box of chicken and waffles. And you know, chicken and waffles, they smell really good, man. And I had a now, bottle and of some, Somebody was saying the other day, though, on one of our shows here, that he didn't yeah. understand chicken and waffles. And I never got into chicken and waffles till I moved here to Harlem. And down the street is a place called Amy Ruth's, and they serve chicken and waffles. Oh, yeah. And somehow, I don't know why, but they also have crawfish and waffles and a whole bunch of other things. And I think they even have a pork chop and waffles. But I don't know why that combination of anything and waffles works, but it does. Yeah, it does, man. It's a syrup. I, I, I figured out it's a syrup. What, syrup on chicken? Yeah, syrup on chicken. Actually, if you put syrup on vegetables, you put syrup on a salad, <laughs> it really picks up the salad. <laughs> really? What kind, yeah. of, what kind of Jew are you? Oh, yeah, you're a hillbilly Jew. I'm a Jew, Billy, Jew, Billy, Jew, <laughs> Billy, Jew. Um, uh, so anyway, but where were There's we? There's the next pitch, Alex. The Jew, Billy. The, Jew, the Beverly Jew, Billy's. <laughs> it's kind of an update of the old thing, but the guy is a Jew. <laughs> yeah. And right. Granny likes to hang out in Vegas and play the slots. <laughs> Maybe. We... <laughs> hey, hey. We were, we're ready for a pitch meeting. My God, we've got a huge hit. All we got to do is go out and get horribly drunk the night before, and we're ready for a pitch. <laughs> but let's go back to this. So you're walking down the hall with your chicken and waffles. All right, I'm walking down the hall with my chicken and waffles, and we had to go into this office that was the head executive of late night programming. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea was that they were looking for a show to go uh, back to back with that mad TV show, which was just starting out at the time. Because this way they'd get an hour and a half coverage uh, against Saturday Night Live. That ah, was their thinking. Good idea. Yeah. So it was a you know it was an exciting meeting when we're thinking about that prospect. And uh, so, uh, <laughs> so I mean, I got a big box of chicken and waffles, and uh, everyone is coming out of their office because it just. The smell of the waffles and the chicken and the and the warm syrup just permeated the hallway. And everyone's coming out of the office. And next thing you know, I got a line of, of, of executives behind me, like I'm the Pied Piper. So I'm like, yeah, where's so-and-so's office? So I found the office, and I went in there, and I took my arm, and I swept everything off that person's desk with my arm. And the producer that we went in with, that was representing the, our pitch, you know, in our show, he told me later that he was horrified because I went in there and just literally knocked everything off, put the box of chicken and waffles down, and I turned around and the office is packed. So what I didn't realize, what I, what I, what I had done was I built an office because we were acting out some sketches. We, we were about to act out some sketches. So by bringing the chicken and waffles, I... Uh, I brought an audience in with me, all these people and all the uh, secretaries and, and assistants and, and plus the executives were in there. And, uh, your, your pitch included aroma. What's yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah aroma. And so I got the chicken waffles and I got them on the desktop. So we serve it out and everybody's sitting around eating chicken waffles. And, uh, uh, the funny thing was, 
I had a big ball of Jack Daniels, which they thought at first was <laughs> fake. So I did it. I had to pitch a sketch. I remember the sketch. It was uh, called uh, The News with Bull Cronklin. And they, because they said they wanted a new segment like Saturday Night Live. But now the deal with Bull was that he'd read the news, but he'd go up, he'd get so upset by the bad news that he'd just start shaking his head and taking a shot of Jack Daniels just to get through his newscast. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. So uh, I, uh, I uh, open the bottle and the place smells like a distillery. Mm -hmm. a small room. I open the bottle. The place smells like a distillery. So I'm doing the bull cronkin thing. I'm taking a couple of shots and you can hear people whispering. And I go, no, it's real. Would you like some? Next thing you know, the, the executives are passing around a bottle of Jack Daniels. They're having shots. They're drinking, uh, uh, they're eating chicken and waffles. Mm -hmm. And it's the best pitch you could ever imagine. And then myself and Clark Taylor, and this other guy, we left the room while our producer stayed to talk to the uh, Fox people. And uh, and uh, he, he comes back out. We were waiting by his, uh, he had his really nice Jeep. And he comes back out and he goes, I don't know what you were thinking. Uh, you know, I should never have let you done that uh, chicken and waffles thing. But he goes, as it turned out, they loved the idea. And um, you, whatever you guys want tonight is yours. And so I said, I want to borrow your car for tonight. So the guy actually gave us his Jeep, and we drove around Hollywood <laughs> in this cool Jeep with no top on, saying, oh, we're the kings, baby. We're going to do it, you know. And we never got the show. And uh, two years later, I end up on the Fox Network on Saturday Night Special and, and had a couple of the same late-night executives, and, and they go uh, – that was the best pitch we've ever had in the 11 years we've been open. That was the best pitch. We're still talking about it. And I say, yeah, but I didn't get the show. Yeah. So what the fuck? Yeah. So what I, 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 I wasted my money on chicken and waffles and a bottle of Jack. Well, you could drink the bottle of Jack Daniels later on. Yeah. It wasn't. Yeah. Boy, but, I tell you, man, it made me feel right at home. See, that, 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 that took the edge off. Because <laughs> I'm in an executive office, but I got chicky waffles. And I have uh, um, uh, a bottle of Jack Daniels. But speaking of Jew, Billy, like I said, man, you put syrup on a matzo ball, it's incredible. <laughs> put syrup on a matzo ball, it's like chicky waffle time. I'll tell you a story. You know, the worst thing is to go into one of these meetings and come out of it. And and I've had this on a couple, one occasion, I remember, where they said, well, listen, we want to do business. Uh, so we've got to come up with a deal here. And they never come up with a deal. Right. You know, it's just like, okay. Or uh, in one case, I had something where at 10 o'clock in the morning they wanted us, and at 2 o'clock in the afternoon they decided they were going in a different direction. You know, that kind of bullshit. And um, Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think that the, the, one of the most disappointing I had, and I, I'm trying to remember the name of the movie now, but I got a call from a friend out at Skywalker Ranch, and they said, "We could you come out and just do a temp track for us? Yeah. And um, I said, sure. And they said, there's no money in it, but we need what we're doing. It's this movie. And I'm trying to remember the name of the movie. I think uh, uh, Ray Fiennes was in it or something. It was about the future, and uh, it, was it was directed by, uh, at that time, C John Cameron's ex-wife, I guess, uh, who went on to do The Hurt Locker. And uh, what it was, was it takes place in the future. In order to s establish the future, they have a talk show host doing a talk show right. uh, about, you know, stuff in the future. Right. So, so I start reading the script and playing the talk show host in the future. And I'm doing a perfect job of it because what am I? I'm a talk show host. Yeah. All right. I think that's pretty easy for you to nail down. Yeah. And they said this is just a, they said this is just a, a temp track for us, so we can just uh, send it down to her and have her f see how it will fit in the picture. But we're not giving you the job, all right? So I'm going, okay, that's cool. So I do the I do the temp track for them, and um, you know they're probably going to go get somebody else to fill in the the, the, the sound uh, eventually. But I'm just the temp track. And they said, that was fucking amazing. They said, that's about as perfect as we can get. He said, we're sending it down to her with the recommendation that you're the talk show host. 
Yeah, that's great. And I said, well, great. And I leave Skywalker Ranch, which, you know, is out there in the middle of Marin, and it's, it's nighttime now, and the stars are out there, and it's really nice. And I'm, I'm driving down the road going, you know, this time I really got something because I, I nailed it, right? Yeah. They went and got another announcer. They got some actor who didn't sound anything like a talk show host. What did they say to you? They give you a reason? Didn't, didn't, uh, they called me up and said she, she's, she's going with an actor. All right, well, let me give you a little piece of advice. Next time you leave Skywalker Ranch, yeah. don't worry about leaving with such a great feeling in your heart and your mind. Make sure your pockets are filled with cool stuff. Well, yeah, yeah, there is cool stuff at Skywalker Ranch, I have to admit. In the main house, they have this these these, these you know, display cases. And I'm I'm walking around I was way where you have lunch is in the main building which is built like a huge Victorian home, right? Yeah. And uh there's a library there, very nice library with a beautiful stained glass window and uh, in in the dome, and if j- just before that, and between that and the uh, and where you eat lunch, uh, are these display cases, and I'm starting to look at them, and there is like the idol that Indiana Jones grabs, yeah right, you know, and his hat, and his whip, and a whole bunch of Lucas memorabilia. And in the midst of all of this, what was I impressed by the most? I mean, I'm looking at the uh, that idol, right, that he grabs and runs with. And I'm not amazed by that. What I'm amazed by, for some reason, I don't know how, there was in Max Senate Comedies a group called the Keystone Cops. Yep. He had every badge from the Keystone Cops on display. And that impressed me. That's a trip. Yeah. Yeah. You ever been to Ray Ray's Ranch? What's Ray Ray's Ranch? Ray Ray used to be my dealer back in the 80s. (laughs) (laughs) So you used to go to Ray Ray's Ranch, right? (laughs) And he had had the badges of every cop he killed. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And no, he had some autographed bindles from celebrities that (laughs) were... With a big light over it, you know. Did you really have a dealer by the name of Ray Ray? Did I what? Did you really have a dealer by the name of Ray Ray? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Ray Ray. Yeah. What kind of drugs were you doing back then? Because I, I don't know that I ever did drugs with you much. No, we didn't. We didn't. Uh, I was mostly into the B12s and uh, uh, some uh, green superfoods. Well, wait a minute. B12? B12 and green superfood. Oh, yeah. Well, I have B12 right here. Oh, man. Don't. Stay, <laughs> don't. Alex, I don't like to see that. Why? Stay off the B12, brother. Why? It's good. It's Touch, fine. you're natural. These Keep are from natural. Co- these are from Costco. Yeah, boy, you've come off of Costco high. You're really going to feel like shit. Well, wait a minute. It doesn't make me feel like shit. It, it just That's what you're saying right now, but I'm telling you, man. They're little, little stay pills. Stay away from the 12. What? Wait a minute. You huge disappointment. I didn't think you were doing anything these days. <laughs> it's just a vitamin. Oh, sure, sure. Well, you know what? We could keep going all day long with this code talk. You can keep... <laughs> you can... <laughs> yeah. You can keep popping those pills left and right. Here's an interesting... Yeah, you're... Hey, Alex, you just keep telling yourself, yeah, that's... Uh, uh, that's... Uh, those, those, those are uh, that's a B12. Sure, you just keep telling yourself that. <laughs> okay. Everything's gonna be just fine. Anyway, the the thing is that I. By the way, let me ask you a question because I I you know I don't know what the perception of me was back in those days, but was I uh, known as a drug user? You know, when you talk to each other, was I a drug user? Was I? Uh, uh, let's see. Was Alex a drug user? Um, were you known as a drug well, user? Well, I, mean, I was a drug user, but I want to know if that was the perception of me. I don't really think so. Really? Yeah. Because I, I, so. I was doing coke every every day. You know. You were? Yeah. I would go out during a break in the new in the uh, 
when the news would go on, go to the bathroom and, and uh, do a little sniff. You know. You were holding out on me. Hmm? Yes, you were I, holding out on me. Yes, I was. <laughs> I, I, know. I would water the stuff down, though. I would take, like, uh, baby laxative or whatever, and I would cut it because I didn't want to become that bad, you know? I didn't want to become the kind of guy who does a whole bindle every day or something like that. A bindle every day keeps the doctor away. You know what? Uh, I, when, I, when I used to party with Amazing Jonathan... Yeah. And, you know what was amazing uh, uh, about amazing? You know, you know, you know, we were roommates briefly. You know what was amazing about amazing Jonathan? What's that? Absolutely nothing. Oh, oh. man, he's Johnny though. <laughs> he's Johnny. He is amazing. Roseanne used to sleep in his van or his truck or something. He had like a a truck, and she when she came for the comedy competition, she couldn't afford a hotel room, so she slept on the floor of his uh, of his truck or van or whatever that thing wow. was. Yeah. No, Johnny went. He went to Vegas and did really well for himself. And and uh, one time I was out there opening for him, and uh, uh, I hadn't seen him in a while, and I was wondering if if he was still doing drugs. And uh, the very first day, I was sitting in his office, facing away from him, and all of a sudden I hear this huge sound, like it sounded like a jet on the tarmac, you know, like a jet engine. Mm -hmm. And I turn around, he's got a huge green tank, like that would be on a Coleman stove. Yeah. With a huge, like, uh, thing to put out a, a sharp arc light on it and uh, and a big glass pipe. And he was taking a hit off of that. And I go, well, I guess he's still doing drugs. <laughs> but uh, when in 86, you know, we, we used to sit there and we're like, who do you think they'll find dead first? And I said, oh, you, definitely you. <laughs> Not me, man. But uh, no. But what was funny was. But he's um, he's still alive, right? Didn't kill him. Yeah, but yeah, he's still alive. But uh, you know, reports have been barely. But now I understand he's he's working again. So hopefully he's doing well. But he told me that he his heart was down to like thirty percent. Really. But he's but he's working again. So I guess he's I say I guess he's doing better. Yeah. Yeah. But he, you know what was funny was whenever I'd hang with him, mm -hmm. I'd have like this syrup coming out of my nose. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, this is like tree sap. And then I found out one day because he went and scored and he, he went back to the apartment and he used to, he used to step on his stuff with Cremora. <laughs> well, the tree sap was very, I hear, is very good on the waffles and chicken. So. Hey, guys, <laughs> really, man. All you need. All you need is uh, uh, cheeky waffles, a cup of coffee, and some amazing Jonathan tree sap. You're good. you're good for the whole day, baby. <laughs> you're ready to go. <laughs> oh, boy. And I just wonder if everybody thought maybe, you know, that I did drugs a lot. And I did. You know, I mean, the, that was, I had to do a, a comedy show every fucking morning, Right. I had to be funny every morning. You guys only had to be funny like once every two weeks, right? Or every week or whenever you would come on. I had to, I had to be, I had to do an entertaining show uh, for, uh, for the masses every morning. And I had to be up for that. I couldn't just, uh, you know, I mean, the first hour was bad enough. I never had a good first hour in the whole time I did that show. It wasn't until 7 o'clock that I perked up. Well, we partied before, man. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hello, am I here? Can you hear me? Testing one, two, three. Testing. Ah, we. Uh, it's very early in the morning, folks. Hey, it's almost like the old days. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, it's being played l l later at night. So let's pretend like it's later at night. Oh my God! I don't think I can have another margarita. Woo! -hoo. <laughs> oh man, I gotta stop. Yeah, let's do another line and do this interview, huh? <laughs> Hey, man. Oh, you know, there was that movie with uh, Alan Arkin, yeah. and Greg Kinnear, A Little Miss Sunshine, I think it was. Y yeah. You remember that movie? Yeah. And Alan Arkin's a grandfather, and uh, he starts doing heroin. Yes. And I'm thinking, you know, like, there, there might be something to that, man. Yeah. You yeah. start doing that, start doing something, uh, you know, in your 70s or 80s. Yeah. Wow. 
Uh, so anyway, listen, I've enjoyed this, and and I'd like to do it again in a couple of weeks, if you don't mind. Well, I'd love to do it again, because I just get warmed up. Yeah, I, 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 you're just getting warmed up. I'm just getting warmed up here. I'm having All right, a well, we'll, nice time. We'll definitely yeah. do it again then, real soon. Well, stick around so I can talk to you after this is all over. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, Bob Rubin is, uh, where are you playing, Bob? Uh, well, you know, if you're going to be in San Francisco, I've got a gig April 29th at Doc's Lab in, in North Beach. Okay, so remember that, folks. That's Write a it Saturday down. night, so it's a fun night. Right. You can't miss this guy. He's one of the funniest guys in the business still to this very day and also a very good friend. Thank you, Bob Rubin. Thanks, Alex. Take care. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's an old interview that we did uh, a couple of months ago with Bob Rubin. I, and, and we haven't had Bob on for a while because Bob's had some uh, technical problems. Uh, basically, he can't, uh, he can't set up his machine. Uh, I mean, hold on a second. I'm trying to get my monitor just right. I, I had somebody in here today doing some technical stuff, and... Uh, Oh man, just it, everything got pulled out. Everything got put back in. Uh, it, it was uh, it was uh, interesting. Anyway, look, let's uh, uh, let's turn on the old you know, Skype lines and see if anybody wants to call. Um, uh, it didn't have many people listening to that interview, so I don't. Know. By the way, they've updated Skype. Let's see what kind of amount of fuck upness they managed to create. In Skype uh, this uh, this uh, uh, this time because uh, they always do something that fucks us over, right? So call us up for the great fuck up or fuck over or fucking fuck over, whatever. Anyway, I have nothing to say. I have nothing to talk about. Uh, I'm uh, uh, the, the point is I'm at the end of my career, and <laughs> oh yeah, I really am. Uh, the end of, of everything. Anyway, so I, I, I just, I have no incentive to talk except to hear from you and let you talk and then join in on that and uh, kind of be your, uh, 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 how can I call it? Uh, I'm just the facilitator. How's that? The facilitator. So uh, we're just sitting here waiting for somebody to call. I'll just sip on my coffee. I mean, um, Where's uh, where's uh, Phil Meyer? I mean, he was on. Uh, oh, you know, um, there's something about uh, a Damien show tonight. Something I wanted to mention. Oh, he said uh, he, he, how difficult it might be. He doesn't know how difficult it will be to do a website because he's got to do one for his lady. And uh, I'm telling you now, if I can do it, you can do it too. Believe me, it's that simple. It's that easy. It's nothing to. Oh, okay, here comes somebody. Who is it? Oh. What do you know? It's Tom Yamaguchi. Whenever, whenever Tom hears that no one else is calling, he <laughs> comes to the rescue. Hello, Tom. How are I, you? I thought if, we, if you're going to go down, I go down with you. We'll go down together. Oh, okay. <laughs> How have you been, Tom? We don't hear from you that often, but you, you're a busy guy. I am a busy guy. I actually was going to go to a meeting tonight, and the last minute got canceled. And then I went up to Sproul Plaza, where they're having a big rally in support of DACA. Uh, and it wasn't as big as San Francisco, but it was pretty big. So I went to that and then came back and uh, listened to Bob Rubin, and, which was interesting because I didn't hear that uh, in interview before. Yeah. I thought that was good. I got the, you know, you got, you got me curious about that movie. And so I went on IB, IMDb. And the movie you're talking about is Strange Days. Yes, that was the movie yeah. that I uh, I I literally did the voice for. And, right, uh, and so that came out in '95. It was about LA in 1999. Right. It was directed by Catherine Bigelow right. and written by her husband James Cameron. Mm -hmm. And the voice of the radio talk show, the radio talk show host, was a guy named Chris. Doritas. Yeah, they, what they did is, uh, I think I mentioned it in the interview, I wasn't listening to it, uh, so I don't know what I said, but I was probably mentioning 
they went out and just hired a Hollywood actor after all was said and done. No, they actually hired a radio talk show host. <laughs> Is he a talk show host? Or was yes, he? he says, uh, through, well, throughout most of the 90s, Chris held the music director position at KCRW-FM in Santa Monica, building a power, blah, blah, a longtime radio host at KCRW, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, yeah, so they hired a talk show host. Oh, oh well. I, uh, all I know is over, <laughs> over at, uh, over at um, what, Skywalker Sound, uh, mm -hmm. they were very impressed by what I had done. I, all I did was a temp track for them. Right, yeah. Uh, temp tracks are created to kind of be, you know, fill in what, what's supposed to happen. Uh, and and then, they, and then they go and get someone else to do it. And then they mm -hmm. heard it and they said, this is so good. She should really, we're going we're gonna to suggest that you be the guy to do it. And I went, oh, goody, that'd be nice and fine and all of that. And then uh, never heard any, anything, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, well, anyway, IMDb, and I have to say, you're the first person in the world to tell me about IMDb back in... Oh boy, when you were on CNET. Really? Yeah. That's yes. Uh, uh, thank you for the resource. <laughs> oh, 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 really? Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, yeah uh, I, that's about when IMDb started. You know, and uh, to, they put us certain people out of work, like a guy that is like Shecky's best friend, uh, Leonard Malton. Right, yeah. You know, he had all those books with every movie ever made, you know, and every time he wanted to, he had, a, he had an argument about a movie or when it was made or who starred in it or whatever. You went to Malton, right? Now, right. Yeah, you just go to IMDb, you know. That's, they got everything. Right. Hello there, Scott Boddicker. IMDb. Alex. How are you? I'm still alive. Still nope. alive, yeah. Haven't and, been nuked yet. And there's a Phil Meyer. Hey. Yeah. Um, how you doing tonight? Uh, not I, I, like I have been doing. And of course, Patrick. Hello, me boy. How are you? I don't know why I always do an Irish accent. I guess the name Patrick. <laughs> but you're not Irish, are you? Uh, just a wee bit. Just, just a bit. <laughs> have you sent sent away to the Mormons to get your DNA done? Uh, no, I don't really give a shit. Well, all I know is girlfriends sent away for those kits, and we've had them sitting here for like a month, and we've yet to spit into them. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> we, we probably should do it this week eventually, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, everybody gets the same uh, result from those kits. Uh, you know, you're 50% Irish, you're 30% this, and you know, even black guys are coming out Irish. You know, well, <laughs> I don't think that well, uh, they have more than one explanation. Uh, I believe we me, have, I'm not going to come get around. <laughs> it, it'll come back. There's no Irish in me. Absolutely well, none whatsoever. My, my girlfriend's kids had the DNA done for our little dog, yeah. and it said that it was um, a, a terrier and Chihuahua. Uh, so, but all all mutts are part Chihuahua. <laughs> you know, that's just the way it is. Yeah, those chihuahuas really get around, don't they? Yes, they do. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, they and they and they come across the wall, and you know they bring us our worst. Now, uh, 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 boy, I'm, I'm excuse me, I'm I'm still out of it from the weekend. Uh, Tom Yamaguchi, you said you were you were doing some kind of marching for DACA or whatever. Well, it wasn't really a march. It was a well. They were right now. Well, they were having a big rally at uh, the federal building in San Francisco. I had thousands of people out there, and they were into the streets. Um, but I was uh, going to be going to another meeting here in in East Bay, but that got canceled. So found out that a bunch of UC students were having a demonstration up on Sproul Plaza. So I went and joined them and listened to them. Tom, is it a good idea that he uh, that Trump has thrown this back to uh, the Congress and said, come up with a law? Uh, you know, I'm uh, I'm 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 uh, disbanding it. And now uh, you've had a bill since 2001 uh, sitting there. And for one reason or another, uh, the, the House uh, or, you know, the and Senate co couldn't pass anything. They couldn't get any legislation on it. They just kept kicking the ball and kicking the can down the road. Uh, mm -hmm. Now what Trump is saying is, hey, you know, uh, come up with a law 
And if you don't, I'll revisit it gee, in six months. Gee, you make him sound like such a good guy. Well, actually, I think it is a good thing. You know, he's saying, hey, come up with a law. May either make it a law uh, instead of a decree. And, uh, you know, they've had... Well, why not not, why not not make a decree? Presidents. Why not not make a de decree and go to Congress and say, do something about it? That's exactly what he just did. No, he didn't do that. Yes, he, he didn't said do, to Congress. Then what is it that within no, six... No, 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 within Patrick is, is waving his head, yes. Uh, so if you don't believe me, ask the Goyam guy. <laughs> Actually, I think the question was directed at me. Yes, <laughs> go right ahead and answer it, Tom. Yes. And the thing is that Trump knew very well that Congress isn't going to do anything. And so he was just playing, being his usual cowardly self. I mean, if he really wanted to get legislation passed, he would have been active in it. But he's basically, once again, you talk about kicking the can down the road. Uh, Congress continues to be that, uh, that they can't, that they're not getting it done. They're just, even the Republican Party is just so disorganized mm -hmm. that they can't get anything done. So, you think he's so calling them on the carpet then? You know, what did you say? I don't know what you mean. Uh, that he's, he's forcing them to make a no, decision? He's being, no, he's just being a coward. And, and he knows that the, he, he just, he wants to pl once again play to his base. And, and yet at the same time, he recognizes that Doc is very popular and he doesn't, He's trying to to, uh, to escape from the heat as much as possible. Part of that cowardice was was uh, getting uh, getting his attorney general out to to, uh, to make the announcement, and not take any any reporter's question. It's a totally cowardly okay. act. But with uh, as, as many Democrats uh, in, in the Congress that support the DACA, you don't think they can get enough Republicans uh, to to uh, support this and 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 make it into law. That this is an opportunity for uh, uh, unity between the parties. Well, if something good, get, if they could get uh, 60 votes in in the Senate, like they needed in 2009 and didn't get. Uh, sure, but do I mean, with the Republic, it's conditionally the Republicans that have killed it. Uh, they, do they still? Do they Bader, still Bader 60 votes? Take it to the House. Bader I know. Put it on the floor. Uh, but do they still need 60 votes with the, the last thing that they did with the uh, Supreme Court yeah. justice? I thought that changed the deal. No, 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 no. for legislation, uh, for legislation, uh, it still it still requires a 60 to break the filibuster, oh, okay. unless it unless it's a um, a budget uh, reconciliation like they were trying to do with uh, repealing the ACA. Uh, right. They were trying to do that with 51 votes. They couldn't even get that. No. No, no. Uh, you know, I I say it's just another swamp cleaning thing because oh, if if the Will you stop with the, the swamp cleaning bullshit. Yeah, Republicans, hey, they well, have an he he uh, you, he didn't clean a swamp. He created a whole new one across town. Just look at it this way: if you pass DACA, you might have eight hundred thousand people that would vote for you in the future. Uh, whether it be uh, a republic, you know, Republican, well, if this is a Republican-based thing, uh, and now you now now Trump has eight hundred thousand people who aren't going to vote for him. Not yet, uh, but if the Congress, but he hopes he can get them out of the country in time so they won't vote against him. Well, and 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 vote look, off. Look, him. look, look, look. These are people who have been here, how, you know, for a long time. They will be sent back to a country where they don't even speak the language. They're not getting sent back. Well, no, what I'm saying is I don't think they're going to get sent back either because I think there's going to be so many court cases clogging mm -hmm. this whole thing up. But the fact that he even thought about doing it is just mean-spirited. I don't know. What did you think, Patrick? You were waving your head when I... Uh, uh... Well, the way to... Why did I understand what it when President Obama um, did the executive order for that? It was everybody from the day he signed it passed that were going to be allowed, and everybody from that moment forward it did not apply to. So I don't really have a problem with what the president has done with this six month deal because. President Obama had a good idea with allowing people that were already here of no fault of their own staying, but he had that contingency that, let's say the date was July 30th or whatever it was, 
um, everybody from July 30th, 2012 back could stay. Everybody from July 30th forward needed to apply or whatever their circumstances were, and none of that had been implemented. So again, we're not implementing the laws that are already there. Was so, it a law? I don't really have a problem with what Trump did. Uh, what I would like to see, and I think this could happen, um, had you posed this to Tom, Phil, is I think there's enough Republicans in the House and the Senate that still do not like Trump that they would swing enough votes so that they could turn that um, into a law and keep DACA as an actual legislative thing. Because I do think there's enough Republicans out there that might do it just to spite Trump. Uh, I think they might do it just to save their own jobs. You know, well, that's true, but uh, I think spiting Trump seems to be a pretty uh, big deal nowadays, regardless of the parties. You know, the ACA thing is down the road. Now uh, it's the uh, DACA thing that uh, that has come up, uh, and uh, you know, and nobody is talking about Korea. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Except Tony. I th I think a lot of people are talking about Korea. Yeah, yeah Kim Jong Un. No, a lot of people are talking about uh, Korea. I mean, I, I'm being facetious that we're talking about DACA and not Korea. That's all. You know, I mean, it, it, look, uh, I'm tired of, of I would just like one day where we don't have to have Trump try and monopolize the conversation. I would like one day when there's a, a big hurricane hitting Houston, Texas, that this guy suddenly doesn't stick his big fat ass into it. You know, just 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 leave us alone for a couple of days for crying out loud. But he he isn't happy unless he's making the news. Yes, Patrick. Your on air light is on. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> it's a violation of Gabnet rules. <laughs> there, you happy? Yes. Now, now I feel at peace. There was this this churning in my belly, like something was wrong. I realized. The light wasn't you know, on, you so. know, you know, Marjorie is going to love you. I yeah, did it. He does. <laughs> huh? I did it just for Marjorie. Oh, I think okay. You can hear it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, He's trying to save electricity. He's being green. No, no, I'm being cheap. <laughs> well, same. <laughs> I got my electric bill big. I got a big bill. Yeah. It was a big one. What? What? what a big one? How big? Cut. Con Ed, it, it was like 280. Mine was up around 395, something like that. You know, we, we, we have a big house, and we have. Uh, do you know that those uh, those uh, uh, set top boxes for cable and for FiOS and so on? Yeah, eight bucks you, an hour. You use about eight what about eight bucks a month in electricity. Oh, okay. And then they also charge you 12 bucks a month for the box. Well, why do you have six of them? I have five of them. I got rid of one. Why do you have five of them? You only watch one at a time. But, yeah, but I don't want to. I don't want to have to get one and move it from room to room as I'm you watching. Move, you need to move yourself to in front of it. I I watch the one in the guest room. I watch I, the the one I watch the least is the one here in the studio. But I well, watch we, we watch the one in the in the in the living room. We watch definitely watch the one in the kitchen. Always watch the one in the bedroom. So really, they they all get watched. The one we didn't replace any longer. We had a uh, dining room. Uh, we had one in the dining room. Yeah. Gee, you follow me really closely, don't you, Scott? Uh, <laughs> that, that's that's so heard it like twenty that's times. So, or, yeah. So yeah. I. I, kind of got, I could kind of give the spiel myself, I think. And I can, I, I can, I can count on my hands the number of times that set has been turned on in the time we've lived here for five years. You know, yeah. so. You have too many TVs is your problem. Yeah, well, I, I wish I didn't because then I could get myself a 4K for the uh, guest room, but I have no excuse. So. Wait, they're going to come out with a 5K organic LED. Well, today we, we I, I had a thing. I, I got... Uh, uh, I got to tell you, for all the problems that I find with FiOS in in uh, dealing with them on some issues, on others they have been absolutely wonderful. This guy came out today from FiOS to figure out why I wasn't seeing my two hard drives, my two network hard drives, 
And he went through one thing and another. He's a big IT guy. See, I mean, the installers aren't IT guys. The installers know how to trim cables, you know, know how to install the equipment. And this guy knew how to fix this stuff. And he must have spent three hours here. And we finally figured it all out. And it was at those stupid fucking goddamn asshole motherfucking cocksuckers at Seagate with these network drives. Don't let it easily recognize. They did with the old ones. I have two of the old ones. I had no problem. But recognize the new IP address. Because every time you go to a new cable company or a new uh, system, uh, like I went from Spectrum to Fios, the IP address changes. The, the, the third number actually in the IP address changes. Here it was a one, I think, in at Spectrum it was a zero. So that all your equipment should, when it's turned on and turned off, should seek out that new uh, um, uh, IP address. They didn't. So they were still on the Time Warner Spectrum uh, IP address. And, but that took them three hours to figure it out and how to even see the, 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 uh, 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 the what do you call it, the, uh, uh, the hard drives. The, Did yeah. he wonder what you were doing when he went into your studio and saw all your crap all oh, over he, the place? Oh, he said uh, he was worse than I am. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really? yeah, he's, uh, yeah. yeah he's, he's worse than I am. Uh, he, you know, he was, uh, he, I, I told him, you know, it, it, these guys really understand it when you tell them, you know, I, well, you know, the reason there's so many boxes here and so on, switchers, router switchers, is because I have the whole house hardwired. I don't like Wi-Fi. And I don't like Wi-Fi because some places it gets spotty. And in this place, Wi-Fi is almost an impossibility because here's the Wi-Fi sitting right here, Right. It's got to go take care of the whole house. I don't think it can. I don't think there's Wi-Fi made that can get through some of these walls. So I saw an advertisement for a Wi-Fi package that you have the router by this company. I forget the name. And then you have like four or five stations that you plug into uh, each room. I, have, I have that. Is, is that what you have? I don't have that. What I have yeah. is I bought a... Uh, uh, a uh, another another an, another uh, an extender basically, and I hardwired to the extender, and then it gives me an, a, another signal for like the bedroom, the dining mm -hmm. room, and the kitchen. It has a hard time in getting into the uh, into the living room. But well, this this one comes with four or five things you actually plug into the wall. Know, I can I can do that. Yeah. That's, that's no, but they're all Wi-Fi, no hard wire. No, but there's no, there, there's no big deal to doing that, but I found those suck. Oh. Okay. okay. The, I found this thing I got, which is kind of a little tower, uh, really takes care of the other part of the house for the most part. And it, but I have a hardwired Ethernet into it, so it's sending out a whole brand new spanking new signal uh, so to the rest of the house. Camper. Yeah. So wherever you go in the house, I mean, if I go into the bedroom, this Wi-Fi, which probably right now is reading off of the Wi-Fi here, will, if they see that it sees that the other one is stronger, will go to that one, you know. But anyway, so this guy, this guy, his name was Ken. He, uh, he was working for, God, hours and hours and hours doing this. And he figured it out. You know, it's still a little hinky. But we've we've got them all showing. We know we know where they are, you know, and they all know what they are now, you know. So uh, that you know, but in the meantime, I bought another one of the older Seagates, which do work, you know. See what happens is the older Seagates probably just recognized there was a new IP address and said, okay, here's what we are now, you know. Uh, it, there's two kind of things. There's static and there's uh, DHCP and I think these things were static. Uh, DHCP lets the system assign an IP address to the. I I thought that had to do, uh, for instance, uh, having a static IP. I thought that had to do with the provider that you could no. you could pay for a static IP no. or you had an no, no, IP. No, you're thinking that, about you know, something else. Each time. You're thinking about something else altogether. I'm talking about house networking. Okay. Well, uh, no, I'm talking about networking. I know what you're talking about, yeah. Phil, and I and I, and the fact is, I've I've had static IP addresses uh, for various things over the years, and they never charge me extra for them. 
Uh, well, know. when you're a business, they do. But T, I was a business. D, DHCP, uh, you're, what happens is when, uh, uh, you know, when your, your network literally assigns an IP address to it. And mm -hmm. usually it'll stay that way even if you reboot the, uh, uh, the whole thing. It'll, it'll, it'll do it anyway. But it, so it, it's, uh, you know, it, it, we got that taken care of, but that was, that, that little piece of stuff, shit depressed me. But then what happened this weekend, uh, I decided, I was looking things up and I went, you know, they did, there's a better system for Fios. It's called extended, uh, an extended DVR, extended quantum DVR. And there's also a premium extend you know d, uh, quantum dvr and what these are is number one it has a hundred hours of play of recording time on the dvr but it also does a whole bunch of other things that uh, that have uh uh nothing to do with uh, uh, uh that has nothing to do with uh, just the amount of time it, it allows you to do six channels at the same time if you want to record that way it also allows you to see anything you've recorded on your iPad anywhere in the world. Wow. Okay. It also has it has a whole bunch of other features and things that make it worthwhile having. And it only costs five dollars more a month than what I'm paying now. So they are coming on Thursday to reinstall my entire system. They've got to. They've got to. Don't worry. It's not going to affect the. Uh, the IP addresses. Uh, they got to put a new DVR in, and then they, all the the smaller boxes, the non-recorders, uh, they have to change too. Oh, also, you can record from any box. You can put any box on pause, or you could only do pause on a DVR. Okay, so it, isn't that what you wanted originally? Well, uh, nobody ever offered it to me. <laughs> you know, if they had all, so then I'm told, well, it's going to cost you a hundred dollars for the installation. And I said, you know, if you just told me when you were installing it in the first place that I could get this, I would have asked for it, and then you wouldn't have to do a second install. And so right. we argued about it. So they said, well, we'll waive the upgrade fee of $50. <laughs> I said, you know, I'm thinking to myself, fuck you and the horses you drove in on. But so finally, I th th then she says to me, it says, it says, so you're going to add $33 to my bill because it's the first payment of three. I said, I don't want to do it over three payments. I want to pay it now and get it all over with. And the person on the other end, and God bless them, you know, these people work for a company that doesn't train them well enough and, and only tells them how to push a button, okay? And she says, uh, we can't do that. It won't let me just let you pay the whole thing at once. You have to pay it in three payments. <laughs> and I went, what? <laughs> I mean, uh, and we were, I was, I was yelling at her. I was out in Fire Island. I was yelling at her for like an hour or so. But all of a sudden, she hangs up on me. And now I'm figuring, oh, well, okay, she lost me. She lost me, right? I mean, I wasn't being nasty or anything like that, but I was being very verbose about why this doesn't make sense blah 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 and i was i was not being mean to her or anything but she lost me did she call me back she had my number no so now That's i gotta call back and wait another <laughs> 10 and also when you go to fios it you wait online for fucking ever you know. It was her break time, yeah. and uh, so she just pulled, she just pulled her head. Time to go home. Said, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so finally, I after another couple of calls, I got the whole thing ironed out. And of course, I'm going to pay him the hundred dollars, but uh, uh, they they gave me some kind of credit on something. I I don't know what's happening, but anyway, so I'm getting this new system. So I when people say well, where where did you go this week, and I said I went out to Fios Island. <laughs> Very nice. You know, but I mean, it was just, it was unbelievable. And then also the trip out there yeah. was pathetic. Never stop raining? Well, it, we had a nice, really nice pour on, on Saturday. 
But mm -hmm. what was terrible was it was sunny when I drove out there. I, I got this bus they have going out there. It's not a, not a transit bus. It's a private bus, Dave's Bus Service. And it picks you up at uh, there's certain stops they make in Manhattan, and then they go out to Bayshore Fire Island. Dave's not there. Yeah. <laughs> to begin with, the traffic was bumper to bumper leaving. Yeah. It's a holiday. It was, I, know, I know, it was a holiday. On top of that, the seat was the hardest seat I've ever sat in in my life. It was making my, it was killing my back. Then I get out to Bayshore and I wait a half hour for the boat, which is okay, that's the usual wait. I get on the boat, somehow it's behind another boat and is going one third the speed it normally goes. By the time I got to Fire Island, I was so fucking pissed and just, <laughs> you know, beside myself I and I had said to myself do I really want to go all the way out to Fire Island for just a couple of days you know do I want to take that car and do I want to you know go on the boat and do all of that and of course girlfriend is saying well come on out you get out here it'll be just really comfortable and nice but by the time I got there I'd gone through so much I wish I'd never left you know so that was my vacation for the weekend, you know. Glad you enjoyed yourself. That and uh, and and yeah. Jack Garfine was out there with us. And yeah, I found out more about Marilyn Monroe than I ever needed to know. But he, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, he was he, it was some great stories he had to say. I have some video on him talking about Marilyn as we were walking down the beach and, and uh, how it, how coming back to Fire Island brought back all kinds of memories because he had walked these same streets. With Marilyn, you know, and wow. uh, and I'm thinking, you know, like, wow, those people out in Fire Island in those days, they realize what a big celebrity they had hanging out there? Or did they notice her? And I, I kind of asked him, did she get noticed? He said she got noticed, but people were very respectful in those days. Mm -hmm. And they would just kind of let her, you know. Yes, do you have something, Tom? Yeah, actually, uh, John Lennon said, yeah, said yeah. That what he really liked about living in New York is that if he could just walk down the street, and people leave him alone. They knew who they where he was, but who he was, but they, but they just respected his privacy. Or if they were, if they did notice who he was, and they just wanted to say something, it was always a very just kind hello. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, hi or hi, John. You know, and that was it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, John told that to me too. He said, that's why I like New York. He says, I can walk the streets and not feel put upon. Well, that wouldn't be true today. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, first you have to contend with TMZ. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, uh, uh, oh, here, here, here's John Rockwell. Let's see here. Uh, hold on. Hello, John. How are you? John, how are you? Can you hear us, John? Yes. Hello. Oh, you. I heard the the magic words John Lennon on the Upper West Side. I worked in that area when he was around. I never. I almost. I don't think I ever saw him, but but that was the that was the story that he could go to the deli. He could go. You know, there'd be a few people <laughs> would probably be going. Oh my God! But everyone, the the locals are like, yeah, you know, another guy. <laughs> my uncle worked for him for a long time mm -hmm. and, st and and still to, to this day for Yoko. And uh, he said that he was, uh, you know, a very uh, nice guy. And at one time uh, they were doing some repair work in one of their units. And uh, John was looking through a, a box of nails to find the right nail <laughs> for, uh, for Mitchie to, to. Yeah, well, uh, 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 my favorite story about my uh, doings with John, I mean, I would meet up with John and Yoko all the time during those days. Mm. Uh, but uh, there was a group called the Living Theater. Uh, you know the Living Theater. Uh, oh, yeah. John. And uh, avant garde sort of thing, yeah. You know, yeah, in fact, uh, it was Julian Beck and Judith Molina. And Ju Julian Beck played um, a gangster in the Cotton Club, and then he was also in Poltergeist 2. He kind of had a very <laughs> gaunt look. And the reason he had a gaunt look is he was dying of cancer. And he was always <laughs> one who said, I will never do movies. But then when he found out he was dying, he wanted to leave money to Judith mm -hmm. and his child. 
And uh, so he started doing all these movies. Uh, and Judith Molina played uh, the uh, grandmother in the Adams Family movies. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they, they were avant-garde, very avant-garde. And, uh, but, and they were always broke. They always needed money. And so uh, this one guy was one of the heads of the, the uh, Living Theater told me, he says, you know, he said, John Lennon, John has told us that he was going to give us a whole bunch of money. He was going to give us about $10,000, which in those days was a fortune for, for these people. And he said, he never came through. Hmm. And um, so I went on the air and talked about it. I shamed him. I said, you know, you know, I said, John, you promised money. Hey, people count on it, you know. Well, that, now I'm at a party with John and Yoko, and they come over to me. And Yoko says, I hear you're mad at us. What for? And I said, well, because you promised money to the living theater, and you welched on it. You didn't do anything about it. And I said, look, I'm the first one to tell you, yeah, you're John Lennon, you're Yoko Ono, you got a lot of money. That doesn't mean you have to give money to people. But when you promise it, they're counting on it. And so then you give it. And Yoko is then going, oh, Alex, I'm sorry. We'll do something about it tomorrow. We'll write a check tomorrow. And they did. We'll write a check tomorrow. We'll make sure this is made good, Alex. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, we're, we're so sorry for this. So we didn't realize that, you know, this, this, Anyway, the, Yoko is very philanthropic. She, she leaves. She leaves. Right. Well, think of how many she, people she and John actually, leave, uh, and I look over at my date, and I can't remember who it was at the time, and I said, "Do you realize I just had my ass kissed by a beetle?" <laughs> <laughs> hey, you uh, know, Yoko bought a lighthouse in Matthews, Virginia. It was the oldest lighthouse on the East Coast. Mm-hmm. And she had my uncle totally restore it and then donated it to an orphanage. Uh, you know, that, that's some of the kinds of things that she's done. Sure. Yoko's, a very, Yoko's one of the most misunderstood women that I can think of. I mean, I always liked Yoko. I, always, I liked her better than John, actually. John was a, was a sweet, nice guy, but he wasn't too bright. I know you find that hard to understand, but, you know, there's such a thing as being a savant, you know? And he was truly a savant because when it came to the brains department, he was not, not that. But she was sharp as a tack, and I, I had her on the air with me more than I ever had John, and I loved having her on because I could get into a really good discussion about things. Um, sure. And, and I often felt that she was completely misunderstood, and, and, it, they say, oh well, she ruined John's career. No, it was the other way around. He ruined hers. She was a great artist, and she stopped doing it because John, you know, the spotlight that was on John, you know. So, eh, you know, whatever. No. Well, she continued to do stuff, uh, you know. Maybe, oh, yeah. You know, uh, and and she's a good business person. Yeah. Uh, you know, not only uh, not only that, but uh, you know, she saw the uh, the future in Brooklyn and and bought a whole bunch of buildings there and uh, uh, redid them. Uh, you know, and and just really cleaned up some yeah. uh, neighborhoods. Very, that, very bright, know. very bright person, very misunderstood, and the whole. And I think you'd agree with me on this, John. The whole, the whole hatred of her by the public was really racist. You know. Well, it was also. You know, who are you to screw around with the Beatles? I mean, you know, some woman that was doing. I mean, I don't think nobody wanted John. Yeah, but they didn't say that. They didn't the, say that about the, they, they, the wives yeah. and girlfriends. But they, they were all they were all considered bitches and. But they didn't whores, say that you know? about. They didn't say that about Linda Eastman. Oh well, but they. But she was. I Linda was not exactly the most loved of the. Uh, of the Beatles' uh, girlfriends, either. Yeah. I mean, certainly later on, definitely it was like, oh my God, you're taking advantage of you know the fame, blah blah blah. I mean, at least I remember. I don't think not. Nobody, nobody, none of the women that loved the Beatles, the girls that were screaming. Well, the last thing I'll, they wanted to see were any of them with women. I'll, you know, I'll tell you something. Sort. I'll tell you something though. And Yoko, especially, maybe it was it wasn't racial. It just she came off. She didn't come off as some 
fantastically gorgeous, you know, supermodel person who would marry a beetle. She was a sort of weird ass artist. <laughs> like, why does she? But she was. Why strong. does John even have any interest in this woman? Well, obviously, John needed that sort of really smart, strong person to keep him together. You know, and you know, I mean, a lot of times those savants are people that you know that are busy and that are good in one thing and can't deal with the rest of the world. You need somebody like that to keep the you know to keep things running, <laughs> to keep the world running. Yeah. So yeah, you know. I I didn't think it was I don't think she killed the Beatles. I mean they were they were falling apart anyway back then. Didn't yeah. they didn't need they didn't need her. <laughs> By the way, folks, if you're watching our program, the empty chair is Tony Magno. Has he been in that chair at all tonight? Uh, he was around. He was around. Yeah. I saw him yeah. before yeah, I came. He comes and goes. He'll come back. Hey Tony, hello. <laughs> yeah. Something yeah, like that. Goes. But uh, yeah. Alex. calls him. Alex. Yes. Tell me about Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> Who was born on my birthday. Well, actually, yeah. actually, oh, right. actually, at some point, I would like to get Jack in here and talk about a lot of that. Because, I mean, his life is one of the most, I was thinking about it this weekend, one of the most um, interesting lives I think anybody has led. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of it absolute horror some of it absolute joy uh he was uh you know the, the, there are two parts of his life one was as a um, director as a, a stage director uh, coming out of um, the actors workshop here in new york and he started the actors workshop west in hollywood uh, he directed two films uh but he he was m very much associated with the uh, the actors workshop and he, um, uh, you know, he, he was like the first guy ever to hire Steve McQueen. Mm -hmm. First guy ever to hire James Dean. Mm -hmm. wow. you know, um, uh, close, very close with Marilyn. Uh, very close with Elia Kazan. Samuel Beckett was his best friend. You know, I mean, so th this, the, this, these two <laughs> parts of a life, part of which sheer horror, the worst horror you can imagine, and the second half, uh, a life that, you know, he met people that I just, I me mean, sitting there talking to me and just saying, so I was telling Tennessee, you know, and I'm going, <laughs> I met Tennessee. He's not well, talking I, tuxedo here. I met Tennessee Williams once, but yeah. to just know that his day-to-day, -day, you know, and he hanging out with Arthur Miller and, mm, you know, yeah. everything. I mean, it was just... Um, it was very funny. He told a story about Elia Kazan, and Kazan the night before had fucked Marilyn. And he said it was very disconcerting because on the bed stand there was a picture of Arthur Miller. Oh! <laughs> okay. Yeah, these are the kind of stories I hear from Jack. They're great, they're great stuff, you know. Bring him on. Wow. Yes, please do. What? I'd love to Bring him on. I, I would, yeah. you know, I really miss the, the 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 interviews you did. That's the one thing that I really really missed because they were not well, as you say, they're not really interviews. They're conversations, and 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 they're just wonderful to just to sit and listen to. Well, you know, Marjorie Mar Marjorie has been egging me on, saying you really should interview Jack. You really should interview Jack. And I, uh, my attitude about it is if. if if Jack would like to, then he can certainly oh. ask, and I'll be happy to. But I don't want to impose on my friendship oh. with him to do it. Does that sound strange? No, nah, it does, because I think you should document his story uh, his, the way it, you can me, do it. A lot of people have done that. No, but this is you doing I mean, it, they, which they, I think you have a special talent. And uh, you should uh, do it while he's still while he's still alive. Well, they, they, he w in some ways he'd be very difficult to interview. I was telling this also to a girlfriend. I said, you know, Jack would be very uh, difficult to interview. And he, she said, why? And I said, because Jack uh, has these stories and they're, they're set in stone, and he tells them quite often. Uh, yeah. And that to get him away from those tapes, because he's an 86-year-old guy. It's very hard to interview an 86-year-old guy because the answers uh. you're going to get are 
our our answers that they've created over a year of years of creating answers. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> even with conversational style, you don't even think with a conversation. No, even with a conversational style, it would be difficult. Uh, oh. and, and and not because he's a difficult person. He's a sweet, wonderful person. Love this man. Uh, but he, uh, y you know, he has told these stories so many times, and. Uh, in fact, he's told them so often that I've heard several of them five times a piece, you know, even in the brief time I've known him. Sound uh, like anybody we know? Uh, well, I know well, what I know. Well, <laughs> I do it because, you know, you, you may have heard them over and over again because you're here every night. But a lot but of you don't people... have the audience changing that fast over every night man it doesn't matter we we appreciate his stories and he's only got 30 minutes so <laughs> by the way i tell you the time that john Lennon kissed stories. my ass <laughs> anyway um so uh, boy tonight I, I have heartburn tonight i don't know i think uh -oh. i now have convinced myself i have esophageal cancer <laughs> i got a bad liver bad pizza. you got a bad liver what from all that drinking probably <laughs> Drink some milk, maybe. Yeah, well. Hey, anyway. milk? You're crazy. I think milk. My mother said milk usually settles your coach your stomach. Yeah. Not, you're Jewish. Unless she's just lying to me. I don't know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, you know, so uh, anyway, I mean, he, he's a fascinating guy. And, and I, I should mention Natalia, who is his girlfriend, who is just, she she's so, she's so wonderful with him. And I have some video of them, and I may... Put it together and show it on the program some night of them. How, just walking. how old is she? She you know? is, I think, in her late forties, I believe. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I'm impressed now. Yeah. Hey, hey. Yeah. And, and she, uh, she adores him. Just adores him. Uh, wow. You know, it's 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 wonderful to see. You know, and uh, it, it <laughs> he told this story. It's on the tape. I shouldn't do it because I've got it on the video. But he was married to Carol Baker. Do you remember who Carol Baker was? Oh, Baby yeah. doll? Yeah. Harlow. Huh? She played Jean Harlow in the, yeah, in the yeah. film in the 60s. Well, sure. she, she also starred in his film, Something Wild. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, she said, uh, she, she, after his separation or divorce from Carol Baker, Marilyn was saying to him, um, you know something? He says, uh, uh, the trouble is you don't have a mother because obviously his mother got killed in the concentration camps. Is it because if your mother were here right now, she'd point her finger at you and say, don't ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> mm. But anyway, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I'll see. Maybe uh, maybe I can get him up here and I would have to pre-record it because, well, no, he stays up late. Hell, he was staying up later than the rest of us. See? Yeah. He's and what does he do for fun? He's over. He's we're, we're watching some stupid movie on television, and he's over at the at a table reading Dostoevsky. You know? Oh, Crime and Punishment! Bring the cat. I never finished it. Alex. Well, you should bring one. He sounds interesting. They didn't no, bring the more. cat. You don't bring the cat because there's a no. No, there's a dog there. You you really oh. the cat. Yeah, That's a classic. there was their cat that we were sitting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so uh, but what a visitation, huh? You know, yeah. I thought you were going to Fire, Fire Island for visitation. No, 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 no. <laughs> we went over to dinner at their place for visitation. Nice. You know, and the cat is just, you know, well, I can't tell you enough about the cat. It's just. Oh, you want that's Bert? That's Berta, right? Yeah, it's Berta. Yeah. Uh, see, but you couldn't take Berta back home for a couple of days. Yeah, I don't know how many of you here. Well, Jeff knows certainly, and uh, and Phil knows what a dreidel is. Yeah. You know, know it's a, a it's a little is. little yeah. spinning top <laughs> that you play with. Uh, you play a game. I've never been able to exactly figure it out. Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalit. Yeah, it has different Hebrew symbol on each side of the dreidel, and then you spin it, and then it falls down, and I don't know, you win some chocolate coins or something. I don't know. Yeah, Gelt. yeah. Uh, Gelt I, but anyway, she, she has Jewish a video Vegas. of spinning this dreidel and the cat, like, <laughs> <laughs> reacting to it, you know. It should, it, it, I'm, I'm in love with a cat I don't own, anyway. <laughs> the cat could be Jewish. What? The cat was better than you at the game? Oh, I'm sure. 
I am sure. <laughs> but uh, cat for the rules. Anyway, so yes. nobody so, knows the rules. The so anyway, so uh, that was my my weekend at Fire Island. Uh, it was we were rained in and. But, you know, something, I'll tell you, I don't mind it when you go somewhere like that and it rains. Because if you're in a house that doesn't leak, you know, and you're in a nice house, it's kind of nice, you know, because this place is like a little, this is like a, a, a seaside cottage is pretty much the best way to describe this place. And well, I heard get that an room. attic dweller. It looked like you were by the water, Alex. Like What? Were you by the water? Like you look like you were walking by like a boat. I hate to tell you this, island. Tony, but when you're on Fire Island, you're always near the water. Oh, but there's a house where it looks the water though, or no, does. no, no. It looks nice. Yeah. Well, what you saw the inside. No, but oh. I saw you walking when you were talking though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but I didn't. I wasn't at that that house. Oh, okay. yeah. But. Yeah. Well, there was there was some uh, thing that you projected out that uh, was in the attic. Yeah, I shot video of Jack and, and Natalia with my uh, with my Karma Grip. Man, mm -hmm. is that thing smooth? It's like oh, you know, it's yeah. the best. It's just the best when you can get it to work right. Every now and then you uh, have to reset it and whatever. That's on your iPhone, not your GoPro. No, it's on the Gro GoPro. GoPro. Oh, okay. Wait a minute, I'll show you. Uh, hold, hold on a second. Man, it's this. It's here somewhere. <laughs> there he goes. Oh, I can't miss it. I just had to move it. <laughs> this is it. Uh huh. This is it. And when I turn Kung it, Fu grip. Yeah. What, can you all see that? Yeah. And when I turn it on, it comes to life. See that? Ooh. And then it's like, uh, you know, steady cam. Steady cam. Right. However, yeah, I'm just saying. however, it doesn't turn itself on. That's a problem I'm having with it lately. Uh, here we are. See. And uh, if, if you, uh, you know, it, it, if you're going around, it just, it, it's very smooth and you never jerk around or anything like that. So it's really nice, really nice. But anyway, go to sleep. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Now you do have a robot. Hmm. Yeah. Well, the only thing is I'm having trouble with it. Uh, hold on. Is it still under warranty? Yeah, but the, I already had the gimbal on this thing replaced under the warranty. The problem yeah. with it is, the problem is the, um, uh, I don't know, I just can't get it to, to work like it should. Like when you turn this thing on and you turn it on with the camera, the camera should come on. And it should shoot with, uh, should shoot... Um, Okay, come on. Uh, <laughs> well, that's the let problem. Let me try and turn it on. No, that turns it off. Then I turn it on. I say, I mean, it's it's it it's it's having it gets cranky. Are the batteries low? No, no. I bet if you hit it on the desk hard enough, you would turn off. Really, you think so? <laughs> It'll certainly turn it off. Definitely turn off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let me turn it off here. Makes nice chirpy noises. Okay, but... and then when I turn it on, it's just done. Will, mm -hmm. will it will it turn the camera on? No, it doesn't. Ah, eh. it's rough. See if it grows. I'm gonna have to have to reset it or something. It's terrible, 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 terrible. Oh well, what the fuck? Are there any firmware downloads or anything for, for no, the thing? No, it's uh, it's just uh, just it. You know. If I and if I try to, that, that'll turn it off. Just another piece of electronics that doesn't do what you think it will do. <laughs> well, it, it's it's suppo it it's it. supposed to turn itself on. When yeah, you, right. When you well, turn it on, and it doesn't. But you've do shot that. some decent stuff with it, so you know, don't worry too much. At least it's once it is on, it works pretty well, right? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Well, yeah. no. Maybe we can get Jack to figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, sure. All that, all that film experience. Yeah, but here we go. Yeah, he had a steady cam. I, I can get it to record. I mean, I can, yeah, I can do it all manually and and get it to do it. But uh... the one thing, the one thing that in the midnight blue days that Alex and I would have loved was a steady cam. 
because those damn <laughs> cameras were the size of a shoebox, and they were <laughs> heavy. For if shoes. they had <laughs> GoPros back in the day, that would have been enough. Oh, we would have loved anything you could have you could have shot. You know, in the light that Alex is in now, we couldn't have shot anything in the light. You know, we had to put all those big, super thousand watt lights on everything because mm -hmm. nobody made a camera that made that could shoot in low light unless you wanted to spend thousands of dollars for like an Aeroflex or something. You know, you couldn't. The regular little Sony camera we had was not meant for anything other than outdoors. I think because yeah. it just didn't have any. Uh, it it just couldn't handle low light at all yeah and of course the, 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 stuff you the nature use. of midnight blue is that we were a lot of times indoors in relatively low light <laughs> you, you know topless had, bars and <laughs> track, uh, I mean, these are not places uh, where you had a lot of light look you know it's <laughs> interesting to note that the that the the cameras that we're using to talk to each other with are much higher definition oh, than yeah. we ever had when we were shooting video Oh, Lord, when you were shooting yeah. video, was it like a beta cam where you had the uh, the whole unit uh, oh, on no. your shoulder? No, tell them. Uh, you tell had them. the whole unit on on a side thing. It was the size of a suitcase, small yeah. a typewriter, and you uh, the portable one, and you it only was big it was enough thirty pounds for a twenty wow. for for the smaller three quarter inch cassette, which has only got like twenty minutes per shot per reel instead wow. of the one that we we could do an hour on. So we'd have to keep putting in more, you know, we'd have to have at least three or a couple of, uh, of, of cassettes if we wanted to do more than 20 minutes of anything. And, uh, but the actual, the actual camera itself literally was the size of a shoebox. Mm. And, you know, which wasn't bad at that point for, I mean, because you'd see these cameras that the, that the TV people were using and stuff, and they were big. You know, they were the. I mean, if we, yeah. if we, if and John remembers this, if we were going to do a traveling shot, I'd have the camera. There'd be a cable behind me, mm. to the uh, to the recorder, <laughs> and then someone else might even be carrying the cam the microphones. You know. Oh, well, that's true. Uh, oh. And On a uh, yeah, boom mic or all, something. You know, yeah, it, it, it was it was it, it was it was sheer torture in those days. Oh, um, it was really yeah, it was it was. It was amazing. We, we we shot as good stuff as we shot. I think you know, looking at what we did, it's like I'm I'm just amazed. <laughs> That's true. That was in the '70s. Yeah, uh, I was I was 70s. talking about the camera. My uh, I had a friend that used to shoot the the green grocer uh, things, and uh, his and but that was in the early '80s, and he had this big uh, you know beta cam thing, and the cassette thing was also part of the camera, and it was about two and a half feet long, maybe longer with the lens and. Oh, and they, oh, you know, they actually had the if you actually had the the the, cas the cassette in the camera that was right. huge. You're right. That was it's massive. Huge. Yeah, oh, absolutely heavy as hell. No, well, thank goodness for that. But uh, it was still it was just amazing to think that what we had to deal with that. It was just you know, a few times I ever got a chance to use a more professional camera, which was oh, a couple of times later on with guys like Rod Swenson doing some recording for. For the plasmatics and stuff, they actually let me use an actual Aeroflex camera one time. Though I was only told to be, I could. You say you can just do the wide shots here. You know, I, you don't. You know, we're not have you go and carry it. I said, okay, fine, whatever. You know, it's a cool camera. I'll, I'm happy. <laughs> you know? But it was a totally, a totally different thing. It was, uh, uh, well, now amazing. here, here's a little bit of history for you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in those days, porn was shot with 16 millimeter mm. occasionally maybe somebody would get the money to do a 35 millimeter basically it was 16 millimeter and uh, and a lot of times to make it even cheaper the film stock were what they called film ends and they would go and they would buy them uh, the film I ends and they were just so you had shorter length of film that you were shooting than you would normally have and then until you put them together right yeah. On top of that, they would do a rental on a Friday and shoot the films over a weekend because you could get the price of, of uh, the camera for a one-day rental over a weekend. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so these were all the little tricks of porn use. But the point that I'm making here is that uh, there was never any f great film quality when it came to porn because film was just, uh, you couldn't do it, there was no video then. In hmm. fact, we wound up, you may remember, John, being the first people ever to shoot 
a literally a porno film on video. Mm -hmm. And I well, the one upstate where we did the we we did it we did a, a whole a whole hour of uh, uh, when we were up uh, up up and up and upstate. Oh, we did a movie. That was a that was a little movie we made. That was a little movie we made. But the, no, this was a thing called Midnight Blue Uncensored. Oh that, yeah, that was hard hardcore. And mm -hmm. I we shot it, and I told them I can do it. What did I tell them? What did we what did we spend on it? I think it was thirty five hundred dollars, and that was basically mm -hmm. to pay the models. You mm -hmm. know, and they and I said I'll deliver it to you on uh, on tape. And they didn't believe that that could be done. And we did it. So we were the first people. And I didn't realize that what we did was ruin the entire porn industry. <laughs> <laughs> because now people were saying, hey, we can do this on video? Video's cheap, right? And they all well, started, there's they a all bunch started of people shoots. that were amazed to see us come in with a video on anything. You know, uh, our, uh, the, the other weird icon of, K of a public access, Ugly George, remember, he... He was doing his pornos on on film, and then he then we did a, a video of him talk, doing that. He decided he was going to be a video guy, yeah. and that, I don't know if he. And somebody just asked me whether he's still around doing anything. I have no idea, you know, if he's still even alive at this point. But uh, you know, but he he was just enamored of the fact that this video looked so good, and it was I'm sure a lot cheaper than trying to do anything with a with with a film camera. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he became this. This, you know, uh, he was starting to go on and doing all the stuff on uh, on public access because it was, you know, a, a cheaper way to do what he wanted to do. Yeah. It was. Yeah. It was. It was. It was video. Yeah. I think I may have actually left. I may have split from Blue right before Uncensored. I left in about the like the spring of '78. Yeah. May or June '78. I remember you doing it, but I don't remember me doing it. <laughs> so I'm thinking, yeah. You know, but well, I didn't. I, even, I didn't even put my name on it. You know, well, there, there was a film thing that Alex took me to that uh, was. I, I'm still amazed by it today. The, these, uh, I think it was uh, uh, Light and Motion or whatever those guys were uh, uh, in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. What happened was they had like three banks of ten different um, uh, slide machines with 35 millimeter slides in it, and then they had a uh, a recorder that had. Uh, a tape on it, reel-to-reel -reel tape, and that was controlling uh, which slide came up, and it was that down the hallway. That, that, that wasn't me. I don't even remember. Yeah, it was that. you. And and uh, and and then what was happening was they were filming or videoing uh, the slides as they were coming out, and they were making sort of a film production with these with these slides. And and, and uh, to this day, I'm still amazed by it. You took me in. It was like on the second floor off Bryant Street or something. Uh, 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 San, uh, I think it was uh, San Francisco. Like it was, it might have been Lucas's thing. Uh, but I, uh, I don't even remember that. No, oh, yeah, I, I remember to this day. I was, st I'm still amazed by those uh, by those banks of uh, 35 millimeter projectors, and uh, you know, and how they were doing it. it was, I don't it was, remember that at all. Really, it was yeah. one of the coolest <laughs> things I ever saw. Are you sure? Well, you know, did? there are people that did uh, yeah, like animation absolutely. using a whole bunch of. Of, of stills by yeah. just tapping a whole bunch of projectors and just you know doing it in, in yeah. order yeah. But that was more yeah. computer you know well the, the, the computer in those days were very basic and what this was yeah. was a reel to reel uh, uh, tape that they were using to to drive these uh, these different banks of uh, I believe that yeah. films <laughs> But it was definitely you, Al. I mean, I would never have gotten access to this place if it, if it wasn't for you taking me in there. Really? Yeah. I can't believe it. So I'm, I'm playing around. Here, here's the... Uh, the GoPro. That's the GoPro. It's amazing, the quality on the GoPro. It is just... It's, it's just... Bre we would have died for this kind of thing uh, yeah. back in the day, you know? Mm. Uh, Sony just came out with something new that's supposed to really rival the GoPro. Uh, this week they, they just all they all say stuff. that, and they well. never do. You know, Let's see, I'm trying to figure out why this thing isn't starting up when I push the button. So, I by do, the way, Alex, they just pulled another, the battery. Out. Another, another, another the contact. Yeah, another famous uh, or person that we helped promote back in the old days is there is a uh, there is a documentary film that in about a week is going to be played 
uh, called The Art of the Prank. It's all about Joey Skaggs. Yeah, you want to know what the piece of shit I, uh, 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 in that thing is? I get uh-huh. no credit at all. You're kidding. Really? No credit at all. Huh. I'm even you in it. I'm even in publicly. it with a cat yeah. house for dogs. And I'm uh, no I, credit at all. Oh, that's that's that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, Alex, taking oh, a research. sent me the information on it, but it looks like he was wondering whether any of that stuff showed up. And we were thinking of going to the the uh, film because it's they're, they're doing a SBA is doing visual arts is doing a, a a film thing and that's part of it. But that's a that's a real that really sucks. Yeah. Can I interrupt yeah. for a second while yeah. Alex is trying to clean that or fix that? Yeah. Okay. Why don't you take a pencil eraser and and go over the contacts where it, where mm. it meets up and see if that will fix it? Maybe it's no. Just, you can uh, clean the contacts. I, I don't think that that's the story on it. Uh, okay. <coughs> but uh, I don't know. I, I give up. Uh, it it is a there's a reset you can do on the thing that that sometimes mm. works. John, how did you uh, process the film after you were done? Where did it go? Well, we didn't really. We didn't use film. We used we used videotape. So it didn't. You know, we just we uh, we did uh, everything on three quarter inch video cassettes, the big old cassettes, and um, that was ooh. What oh, lost John? Oh, what? Well, how, how did we lose John? Did pay for it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll come back. Good job, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, here we One go. Question, you kill him off. <laughs> here we go. Let me see here. I mean, uh, there we go. There, there we go. Here, he'll be here. There we go. I hit the, I hit, I hit the hang up button accidentally there. Sorry, guys. Oh, so it was. <laughs> I, was like, Man, how far are you? I thought Jeff did it. Yeah, we, oh. we heard you go, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Phil did. No, it wasn't. It's Phil's fault. No. Yeah, it's always Phil's fault. Yeah, well, yeah, it's always your fault, Phil. No. But, I, I uh, thought maybe you just never paid. We didn't. We the few times we ever had film, like yeah. if somebody, if there was some film that we wanted to, you know, to 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 show, like an old porn or something like that. I think if I remember, Alex. If anything, we just projected it on a screen and recorded the screen. If anything, that's I mean, exactly what we mostly, did. Or people just gave us videos of their films, like uh, you know the old. Uh, oh, I'm trying to think of some of the things we did, but a lot of the of the of the of the the uh, porno films in that period, uh, they were just starting. Some of them were just starting to come out on video, and sometimes we could get a you know Al Goldstein sometimes would get a video of it for his. To do his review and then we could review it later, you know, something like that. Yeah. But it wasn't, you know, we very seldom had to do anything with film and then make it into a video. Um, well, mostly we just did it, you know, initially it was just us you know, hitting the, you know, hitting the button and just hoping uh, recording whatever it was. Exactly. I'm trying to think of, uh, yeah, I mean, we did, did interview some, uh, you know, porno, uh, you know, stars and, and whatever, but I think. I don't remember how we ended up uh, transferring those uh, any examples of their work. If they were on video or if they were on film, somehow we had a video of it or made a video ourselves by maybe just projecting it. And, yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't. You know, it was it was it was low tech. <laughs> a lot of this was real low tech. We also one of the things we ended up doing was playing around with the video camera, where we would adjust the the, the color and background things and get like video feedback so you get all these these colors and 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 moir patterns things you know whipping around and that was instead of instead of having a background we would we would do something like you know, like shoot some some dancer or something and then she'd be dancing along and it would be all these patterns behind it just because we had played around with the uh with the, with the camera things it had nothing to do with anything we did you know we didn't have uh the exciting green screen or anything like that. We had a black screen. You know, that would do it. it was pretty. It was pretty simple. But we, you know, I mean, you did these things because you didn't know you couldn't do them. I think that's a lot of way a lot of that stuff happens with with early technology. When you start out, you learn something. Like people were doing things on the computer, they didn't know they that they weren't supposed to, but they were able to figure out a way to do them. You know, uh, one of my friends, a mutual a guy that worked for. For Alex, way back, uh, Jim, 
uh, who was a mutual friend of mine and others, he went before he went out to the West Coast. He's an he's a illustrator and comic artist. Uh, one of his friends got involved with the earliest version of the Mac computer, where it was all black and white and everything was in pixels. And this guy had Jim trying to put together um, black and white pixel, um, I, not just icons, but uh, but pictures or something that you could you could then you know have if you wanted a dog he'd have it. You could you could he could put together a whole thing where you'd have all these. Uh, what, the closest thing to having, uh, um, I guess, cartoon sort of effects or something like that, because Jim was an artist, you know. And so I got to see the the Mac way back when it first started. And, of course, there was very little he could really do because it was all, you know, so many pixels by so many pixels. It wasn't particularly, uh, it wasn't particularly fancy. But you could make, you know, I mean, which people did, you could make various... Uh, um, you can make things that look sort of like people and dogs and 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 other stuff like that, and nobody had really done it <laughs> before. But everybody said, "Oh, this is a graphic. This will be a great graphic computer." Well, there you go. Get a well, graphic. Yeah, I just wish back in those days we had what we had now. Oh God, yeah. Because uh, we could have just uh, done some really sensational work. You know, and we did. Sen- I think we did sensational work back well, then. What we had, you're right. For what man, we had, I think we turned amazing out, stuff. We turned out some amazing, amazing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If I can get, if I can find someone that can clean fact, up. Here, the, here, the, here, the, here's you know, here, the things I've got. Yeah. I'll send you a copy. <laughs> here's some of the thing. Here's one of the things I've always said, that when you have less to work with, when you're when you have all those obstacles that we had to try mm. and make something look good or to, to kind of push the envelope on the technology that exists at that point and because it's so rough to do it makes you get inventive mm. it makes you come up with ways of doing things you know sure. and and um when i go back and look at some of that old stuff i go hey it's not bad considering we had shit to work with true you know? true very very simple yeah. equipment yeah. it wasn't anywhere near what the local news local news people had, and yet there were local news people that, that would uh, turn on our show every midnight on Sunday or whatever. You know, you know what? I, say, what this is great. What, yeah. what gets me about the local news people mm. is seeing them shooting a news item, or shooting a news thing, mm-hmm. and they're going out with these big, giant, lumbering cameras, mm. and I'm going, "You could shoot that with a fucking GoPro. What are you doing co- covering the news?" With these cameras, which insinuate themselves on the uh, on on the story. In other words, what I like about this is I could get Jack to talk while I was shooting with it because it's just so innocuous and so unassuming that people don't feel they're being being shot. You know, I think a lot of that is ego too. It's like, hey, I'm you know I'm the Channel Seven news guy, so I have to be there. With a cameraman and a guy with a microphone, and and there's there's Governor Cuomo. We're gonna be, well, you know, well, whatever. The, the truth like, of the matter yeah. is, and I'll tell you this right now: if I showed you the pictures I shot this weekend in 4K, okay, yeah, you would wow. say, why the hell do they need those big fucking cameras? Sure. You know, it isn't. Is it the lenses? Yeah, well, maybe the, you can put a lens on a smaller device. You know. Yeah, these point, this point. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's it ju- it's just amazing uh, mm-hmm. that that the news operations still use such big cameras. That's not to say mm-hmm. that the movie people don't. Uh, some of them are shooting with Nikon's, shooting films with Nikon's. Well, yeah. even the local so, guys. Yeah. I just bought a new Nikon. I know. And it's uh, we, 8K. We, we heard about that. Yeah. You got. You can do a. Okay. Yes. Hi. I was just going to cut Phil off. So you're not allowed to have any more toys. You can't buy anything until you figure out all of the technology that you already own, and then you can buy a new toy. Well, it's a different kind of toy. And, uh, it's a it was, toy. No, it's not a toy. It's, <laughs> hey, it ain't, it, it ain't the pixels. It ain't the, uh, the lenses. It's what you do with them that counts. Yeah. You know, well, and it, and I and I I've, I've seen people I've seen, I've taken some incredible photographs with my iPhone. Oh, absolutely. You know, and 
you know, so yeah. I mean, it it's it, it it isn't the the technology. I mean, uh, how many forty eight k pixels or something? What did you say? Six well, or something like yeah, that. Yeah. What? Why? Well, it, that's what it comes with, but it does a lot of other things. It's just, uh, it also Boy. shoots 8K video. Uh, oh, wow. And, 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 and tell, me where, tell, you, tell me where you're going to shoot 8K video. I'm not going to shoot video at all because I never do, yeah. but uh, yeah. uh, this, uh, you know, I want to be this, able to How much does this stop. little thing cost in there? Uh, it was a pretty reasonable, it was $3,400. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> reasonable you know, for what it is, but it's yeah. still pretty much for anything else. How many yeah. hat boxes do you have to make, Tony, <laughs> in order to make that much to make in order to make that much money? <laughs> One box per costume. Alex, if that's like fifteen case. Wait, 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 Renee. Well, <laughs> depending on the lens, you get a different camera. So this is not his only camera. Yeah. How many camera boxes do you own, Phil? Two other ones. Two. So well, you know, I, you know, I could, yeah. I could complain to him, but I have sitting in my closet, maybe camera. about eight or nine different video cameras. But the reason they are there is because each one of them was a new generation with clearer picture and better, better stuff. I mean. The best you one, moved up. the best one that I, I bought was a about a three thousand dollar or thirty five hundred dollar. I mean, you're talking about that. Um, uh, 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 is it a Canon? Yeah, I think it's a Canon uh, three chip camera. You know, and it's w wonderful. I took it to China, shot some great video They're with it. They're still six thousand uh, bucks. Uh, uh, those three chip cameras. Uh, I was looking at one at Anorama, just looking. Yeah, you know, but, but I, I mean, so uh, I course. but I use this. And I took it to China, but I got to tell you, I can get a better picture out of this fucking GoPro than I ever got out of that three-chip camera. You know, well, and, it, it's and you know what? I have to admit, you're you're correct, Alex. I uh, there's some shots that you might as well just take with your iPhone because the iPhone has gotten so good at oh, shooting pictures I, that you sometimes. I, I shot an entire vacation. I shot an entire vacation with my iPhone. Uh, uh, in 4K, and it looks gorgeous. You know, I just wanted to do it to see if it could be done, and it could be done. The only problem is 4K uses up a lot of uh, a lot of uh, 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 memory, Space. memory, megabytes, yeah. and and there's a precious little ways. I think you can offload those files somehow onto something else, but it it's not easy. You know, in that you got respect. SD cards or something you put in cards. There, but you know, no SD cards because it's a, it's oh, a no. iPhone. It's your iPhone. Oh, it's my yeah. Right. Well, Apple's in the middle of of Apple's in the middle of merging its photo into one place. So, and I think that also means video as well. So, um, if it's a problem before, it, you might even try it now. Because or, or wait another six months and you might try it because then everything will be merged by then and it might be much easier for you to try. Well, what what I need to do, what I need to do, like, if I were to shoot, let's say, a whole vacation on my iPhone, which you could do and get a very nice look looking picture. Um, the problem with it is, is, is that the, the the memory somehow you have to be able to unload all the well, video from the memory, and I think there are some. Uh, Flash so, drives that they flash make drives that, that you can put the, on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They plug into the maybe bottom. Maybe the cloud or something. You have a cloud. Uh, thing you can connect uh, that's to maybe too slow. Oh, 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 okay, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, wait a minute. Uh, Jeff's got his hand up. Yeah, I was curious as to how much does an uh, that what's it called iPro? The GoPro. The GoPro. Uh, how this, much does that cost? This They're GoPro was this GoPro bucks. was four, no four hundred bucks. Yeah, four four hundred, and the and the uh, the grip the grip which girlfriend got me for my uh, for for my birthday uh, was another three hundred. But I've never been able to get that thing to work right for any amount of time. It's a very defective mm. product. Really? But man, when I have shot with it, I mean, I can turn it on, make it work with uh, with having to do a whole bunch of different things rather than just simply press one button which I should be able to do uh, mm -hmm. but you know and, and I could reset it and then it'll work okay but 
when I was shooting the other day with the, the, the quality of the video that you have with the grip and the GoPro is just breathtaking. Well, yours, just you can see what you're doing. It's got a monitor. Mine, I think I can buy a monitor for it, but it's the four, and it doesn't, you know, I don't know. You have a hard, you have a hard time shot. seeing the monitor, though, when you're using the grip because it's... Well, I know I can see it on an iPhone, but I think it's delayed. You know. What? Uh, you can see uh, the, the four. You can see what you're filming on the iPhone. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's delayed, yeah. yeah. You can do the same thing with the uh, GoPro. Yeah, but uh, when you have that monitor on the back of it, like the five does, uh, and I'm not buying a five because I don't use the four, <laughs> but uh, you know, you can at least see, you know, how you're framed and and so forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations! You actually turned down an offer to buy a camera. That's impressive, though. That's, <laughs> That's really impressive. good. You're making really steps. Impressive. Yeah. Well, I got a four and I don't use it, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, really good. Uh, I wanted to get a medium format camera. I, I wanted medium format, and uh, I didn't want to change lens systems. So my set, I settled on more megapixels. No more toys <laughs> until you figure out everything in your house. Mm. You uh -huh. Yeah, no kidding. I. <laughs> The the, the only thing I, the only thing I've been thinking about maybe buying, and I really shouldn't because I'm living on a. What, what's what's fixed it called? Income. The fixed income <laughs> is a is fixed. in there. I can get one for about a grand. Is a four, is a four K camera for a vacation, but the thing is, I'm going to be disappointed with it because the picture it will take will not be as good as the GoPro. I don't know how GoPro does it. Okay, but that that yeah, looks as, it, it, the video on that in four K looks as good as anything you'll see on television. You know, so whatever. Yeah, but they only do one thing, really. It's not like, it's not like the camera Phil bought. He bought something that shoots video. He bought something that shoots uh, uh, shot, uh, photos. Yeah. He bought something that re that rewinds it for you. Something that you can edit it for right in his hands. He can do the editing. He can also send it up to the cloud, or even is this? Oh no, don't tell me. Is this one of the ones that will allow you to broadcast? No, I don't think so. It's a D850. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> you scared me. Uh, you, can, you can broadcast from any video camera if you have the uh, the the. Um, the uh, Canon, I know you can, but well, I don't think the no, Nikon no, but has you, that. No, but you, you you have to you have to live stream, for instance, sell something. It goes right on top of the camera oh, and the light shoots. But now, the, yeah, they're going to get rid of at some point in time the video or the camera makers will just say, you, well, we you don't know, need you, live stream. You know We're just going to send it straight. You, out. you know what's wrong with this is it. You know, I used to be one uh, who believed in giving the power of television to the people. That mm -hmm. coming out with, like, that's why when I worked with, uh, with um, Play Incorporated uh, the, and, and New Tech, the, the concept was, it, let's put video in the hands of the people. Let's make it cheap enough so people can have the tools that were only the privilege of big television stations in the past. And we managed to do that. And it was a good thing that we did because it democratized uh, video making, it democratized broadcasting. Uh, but what has happened in the intervening years is actually some very negative things. Uh, in that, well, for instance, uh, since everybody in their hand now has a video camera capable of shooting video, how many people have been caught in embarrassing situations that have ruined their fucking careers? Mm -hmm. That wouldn't have had their fucking careers ruined were it not for the fact that... Yes, are you saying, want to say something, Tom? Yeah, I say, actually, people have probably ruined their, their own careers <laughs> by, by, by doing it themselves. <laughs> well, that, that too. How many that abuses too. have been, uh, have been uh, brought out, whether it's police brutality or anything well, like I'm that? Well, what I'm saying is none of that would have come to pass. We say that's a good thing, but, yeah. you know, there's still one failing with even that. And, and I've tried to explain this to people. Well, when you are seeing a video, you are seeing a... Slice. A rectangular picture. You're not yeah. seeing what's going on outside that frame. And that That's frame true. is going to shoot whatever it finds to be the story. 
The story might also be on the sides. There might be other things going on that would mitigate what that video is showing you. But you, the, the video is showing you what the person shooting it wanted you to see. Does that mm -hmm. make any sense? Yeah, a lot of sense. Yeah. You know, yeah, because you're you're directing uh, the camera at uh, at the subject that you want, to, well, and uh, so you're and, telling a story. And, and you're also you're also photographing your prejudices. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you may be ignoring stuff that's happening somewhere else that you don't really. It's like, oh, hell with that. I just want to show that. Well, you know, when I was in Chicago years ago see, during the Chicago be, convention uh, riots. Uh, right. During the Chicago convention riots, uh, mm -hmm. I uh, uh, I saw a perfect example of that, and that was uh, there was no way any camera could shoot that and give you a real idea of what was going on, the police brutality, all of that, because it was taking place outside of that frame. You know, and that's why you have a DSLR with a wide angle lens. No, like no, a but no, today you do. Something. Today <laughs> you do. Way. Today yeah. you do. Back Boy, then you way. didn't. Back then, <laughs> that whole that whole Republican convention with the Democrat. riots would have would have had a different kind of right. coverage had everybody had a video camera like they do today. Yeah. You know. And I, I said to, to Dan Rather in an interview I was doing with him, I said, you know, we're coming to an age now where every minute of every day is being recorded somewhere. And now it's almost every minute of every day everywhere. And people have cameras outside their homes and, and businesses, exactly. and they're recording what's happening on the street. Or they have security cameras. Yeah, sec that's right, security you know. cameras. Uh, so, I mean, it, it, it's a whole different kind of uh, world out there that's, uh, you know, that we have are are dealing with now uh and uh, look at all the local yeah look at all the local news uh at least locally the local news thing when somebody somebody gets mugged or somebody gets raped or something and they show they show uh security camera footage it's not cool. very quality but you can actually see the you know, potential and they and they catch these guys because they you know yeah. i don't know why the, the guys didn't realize that they might get you know, what about the tennis player, the black it. tennis player, that was accused of killing uh, a uh, another motorist, and the security tapes that happened. That happened. That happened to be uh, yeah. uh, uh, Williams, Venus Serena Williams. Williams. I think no Venus. Yeah. Venus Williams. Okay, yeah, one of them. And uh, yeah, and, and the and the security cameras actually exonerated her and showed that she didn't run the light, and yeah. uh, uh, you know because she was pretty upset. And I'm sure she's still upset whether she was exonerated well, or not. Whether you're exonerated or not, you still killed somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, right. Renee. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you know, are we going to in America get to the point where they are in in Eastern Europe, which is where they have a video cam or a, a recording camera outside their vehicle and then one coming in? Well, them as well? well, well, you know, there's a, you some if if you go online, there's some amazing stuff with Russian car cams, and the reason Russians yeah. have car cams is as a, a, is for insurance, Fraud because too. people were yeah, well, the, the people were like allowing themselves to have a car hit them or were creating accidents, so they have cameras going all the time on in these cars, so you get some incredible footage of stuff. I mean, yeah. just go to YouTube. It's just filled with that stuff. I blue, I, sc I blue screen myself against some of it once and was having yeah. a lot of fun with it, you know. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. Uh, the Daily Show did a whole bit about that. And what happened was, you know, uh, that remember that big uh, meteor that... that uh, yeah, I was yep. going to say the meteor. They were, yep. like, got so many shots of it. From, and that's the reason, because so many have their, these, these uh, cameras on their car. Because they'll be driving down the street and some guy will just jump on top of the hood and claim he had he got hit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyway, I want to thank everybody. Scott Boddicker, who is not there right now. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know where he is, but, you know, uh, an empty chair with Scott Boddicker is still Scott Boddicker, you know, and that's great. And that's great. But I heard him. I heard you, Scott. <laughs> Uh, I'm lying down to take a nap. Yes. Phil Meyer, thank you so much. 
Look, we appreciate it. We appreciate it, uh, Tony, your participation tonight. Je uh, Jeff, great having you here. Tom, always a pleasure. We we uh, see you not Thank quite you. as often as we would Thank like. You. What? Thank you, you and John Rockwell. That was a fantastic conversation about the 70s. I really, really, really loved it. Oh, great. <laughs> great. You know, all lived it. We all lived it. We yeah. all lived it. Uh, Patrick, thank you. John Rockwell and, of course, Renee Collins. Thanks to all of you. Wave goodbye because it's time to say nighty-night. Bye. Anyway, that's our, uh, that's our uh, crowd tonight. Uh, and uh, they will uh, maybe some of them will continue on the next program, which of course is Jack and Amy, and they will be here with a little program called uh, the Intersection. I'm just trying to close everything down here and get stuff ready for the next show that comes in after us. Anyway, uh, I'm Alex Bennett. That's it for me tonight. Uh, and I hope I can get this thing to work someday. You get to see me working on my uh, on my GoPro. Anyway, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you again soon. In the meantime, I'll see you, well, tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, you know, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.